All right, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through how I would bootstrap a brand new company to $1 million in annual recurring revenue. I've done this for multiple companies ranging from some of the agencies I own to some of the SaaS companies I own. I don't think getting to a million dollars is the end all be all. It's a huge accomplishment. You know, I was super proud and happy. I even showed my dad when I hit a million dollars in annual recurring revenue. But at the end of the day, it's about what you take home. A million dollars does not mean that you are financially free. It does not mean that I'm like some uber rich guy or anything of that sort. It's just a huge accomplishment. You know, I think the stat says that less than 3% of businesses ever hit a million dollars in annual recurring revenue. So being able to hit that, it's just a huge accomplishment in my eyes. It's not that it's hard to hit. I think to get to a million dollars, it's actually very simple, but that doesn't mean it's easy to do. And I wish someone made a video like this when I first started because it would have cut my learning curve by half. And I think there's a lot of ways to get to a million dollars, but in my eyes, this is the simplest way to get there. And that's kind of what I want to walk you guys through. From a business model perspective, you know, there, there's e-commerce businesses, there's the drop shipping stuff, there's, you know, SaaS companies, there's B2C SaaS companies, there's B2B company, there, there's, there's tons of different business models out there. And, and what I found, you know, I've ran a lot of different businesses and different types and everything of that sort. I, I think the, the main thing I've realized is one, I, I'm a really big fan of B2B type businesses because I think it's easier to compete in and, and it's more ordinary to charge higher prices. And, and that kind of takes me to my first point, right? You need to have a service or a product that's, you know, you're collecting at least a minimum of like 1500 to start the engagement and that your lifetime value, you know, so like how much you charge the customer over their lifetime with you is in that six to $10,000 range. The reason being is because, okay, if you can collect a certain amount of money up front, if you're running paid ads, you could break even and you make money on the back end, which is, you know, very important. You can also run an outbound sales funnel and actually be able to pay sales reps commissions. And doing that is a lot easier than having people go to a landing page and sign up and self-serve themselves. Because at that point, you just need a, a, a huge amount of traffic for that funnel to actually work. And to acquire you know, traffic, you either pay for it, which is expensive, specifically when you bootstrap. You know, you're taking a, a risk if you haven't really validated your offer yet. As well as, or so it's either you pay for the traffic or you create the traffic through organic content. And a lot of you guys, even myself included, are not great content marketers. And so it's, it's hard to do at scale, specifically for a business prop that hasn't been validated. You need money up front. You need money sooner than later so that you can start bankrolling that to create the company. And so I'm a huge fan of business models where you're able to charge some kind of implementation, onboarding, or setup fee to kind of like be able to bankroll the rest of your backend. And then over the life period of the client being with you, you know, you can get in that six to $10,000 range. The other thing to kind of think about is like, you just sell a lot less customers. Like if, let's say you're selling like phone cases for, you know, a dollar, you need to sell a million of those to get to a million dollars. And like, you know, if we just kind of think you probably have like a 3% conversion rate on all traffic, that means you need to have a, an insane amount of traffic to be able to kind of backfill into that amount. And so like, you know, if you're selling something at $10,000, you just need a lot less people sold and a lot less traffic to actually make this actually happen. From a, a business model perspective, that's something that I think is very important. I think also whenever you're selling B2B, a lot of people have very complicated backends. So, you know, whatever process that they're doing, they're just either over complicating it themselves or they're just in an industry or, or selling something that is just complicated. So I like to have things that are a little bit more productized, a little bit more copy and paste because it, it just makes it way easier to scale. One of my favorite sayings is that simple scales, fancy fails. And I, that's a very important lesson that I learned. You know, I try to have a very complicated backend and it just never scaled whenever we started to sign a lot of clients and started to actually fulfill for them. It just made everything a lot more complex. And so you just wanna have a backend that's very productized and it is, can rely a lot on automations and then you can just build a great customer experience around it. I think those are the best type of businesses. If you look at a company like Hypertide, for example, I think that's a great example of one. They charge an implementation fee. I think it's you know $1,500. I think they're raising the price just due to their demand. And then you know they charge you $100 for every domain. And that's phenomenal. Like they're collecting a lot and a huge portion of the LTV be up front and then the back end is completely automated right as soon as you just sign up in the app all your you I mean they don't really have to do anything they just have to sell you and then the back end is completely automated through code and so like that's a business that can really scale and then you just need to have market validation i think that's the other big thing product market fit a lot of people build products and services and solutions and offers for problems that don't really have too much demand or problems that aren't that big that they need like a huge solution for and so you need to identify for product market fit if not it just makes every form of marketing that you do so much harder 
And so from a business model perspective, like I think those are the three things that you need to be able to kind of start doing and building to kind of hit a million dollars with a lot more ease. I've done SaaS companies where, you know, we're charging $97 a month and it's month to month and it's self sign up. It was extremely hard to even get that to like a hundred K a month or even hit like half a million dollars in total revenue just because like churn is high, you're selling a low ticket product and then you have to acquire an enormous amount of traffic to be able to replace the churn. And that's just a very hard business model and game to win at. It's not saying that you can't hit a million dollars doing that. It just, it's a lot harder. There's certain business models that just have a little bit more inherent benefits versus others. We just kind of look at the math of it too. So to reach a million dollars in annual revenue, and if you're getting around $1,500 per month per client with an LTV of $9,000, you typically need 112 clients that you sell annually. So that comes out to be about nine to 10 new clients every single month. And if you're assuming a 20% close rate, and if you have product market fit and some of these other things that I'm about to speak about, you really only need 50 appointments every single month. If we factor in disqualification rate and a no-show rate, you're maybe, we'll overestimate this. We'll say you'll need like 65 to 70 appointments a month. And so that, like, that's what you have to figure out. What is the product that I'm gonna sell that I can charge this amount for that has a simplified backend that has product market fit. And then I need to figure out how I can get 60 to 70 appointments net new every single month. And then over 12 to 14 month period, I'm assuming ramp up close rates, not going to just be a one call close that I'll be able to hit a million dollars. And so that's a couple of things to kind of keep in mind. Like selling 112 clients a year is, in my opinion, pretty simple. And it's very doable and very manageable. And so another couple of things that, I, you know, I wish someone told me early on is that when you first start, you have no real product. You still haven't really established your business. It's more of an idea and you're just trying to test the waters. You should just be focused on learning. Learning and getting the experience and you shouldn't be focused on profits. You should be okay with losing money or even just breaking even, best case scenario, with your early clients. And the reason why is because you're paying to learn, you're paying to get the experience and then you're able to refine your offer and you really understand the customer's needs. And I think that's so important. When I first started, and I, I see this with a lot of guys in the space, like they just want to get paid from day one. They just want to get paid and they want to make a lot of money and then they want to blow it and spend it and everything of that sort. It never works really well that way. Be okay with not making a dollar for your first six months and being able to just reinvest everything back into the business, just gain experience and everything of that sort. All you're doing is really investing into the business. That's what it is. In the beginning as well, a lot of people, they think they have a product. They think they, they have a solution. They build it. They sell it on a customer and they just never see to see, like they never test to see if it actually gets them a result that they sold them on. And so in the beginning stages, your goal should be, okay, let me break even. Let me learn a lot. And let me figure out how I can perfect delivery from a product standpoint or a service standpoint. How can I make sure that the end customer consistently gets the results that I'm selling them on? And once you figure that out and you have customers that you've sold, now you can start to build your base of social proof. All these early customers that you're selling and giving them an incredible deal so that you just break even, you can always go back to them and say, hey, look, I'm gonna give you this incredible deal. I'm gonna get you the results that you want. And all I want in return is for you to speak about it on a customer success interview. That's it. And now you can build this bank of social proof and now you're able to go to market. So now let's actually talk about going to market. And before we do that, let's, let's recap real quick. You have a business for, your, for each customer you bring on, you're making anywhere from six to $10,000. Your back end is very simple and it leans more on automation. I think there's tons of business models that do that. I think agencies are here one. And then you're validating and proving that your offer is actually wanted by the market. Those are the three things. And then your goal is let's figure out how to break even on my first five to 10 customers, figure out how I can consistently get really good results for the end customer, and then take those really good results and build customer success interviews. After I do that, now I start the initial steps of being able to go to market. And I think the two necessary things there are a solid website and a decent LinkedIn presence. And so when it comes to the websites, everyone tries to build like these 20 page websites. When you first start out, I promise you, you do not need a 20 page website. I think ours right now is like four pages. When we first started the first variation of Weeper, it was literally one page. It was kind of awful design and everything of that sort. But here's what it did have. It had a bold claim, it had a VSL, it had testimonials, and it had a process overview. And that's what you guys need. A simple website that has those four things and obviously a calendar to book a call. And then I think this one's a big one, right? When you're selling B2B, LinkedIn is very important. Whenever I get a cold email and it's something that I actually legitimately want, I'll try to find the person on LinkedIn. So I'll search up the person who cold emailed me and see who this person is. And then I'll go look at their company page to see if how many employees they have and just kind of like, you know, scope them out. And so create a LinkedIn page, put your company on there, put a nice little description, optimize it. If you type in how to optimize your LinkedIn profile and you look up James Watson, he has like, I think an hour long video that shows you everything that you need and it's very good. And that's all you need for the initial steps. And now you can start to slowly 
figure out your sales process. When it comes to sales, like I think the simple things, like people try to, once again, try to figure out all these fancy growth hacks and crazy growth things that they need to do. They don't need to do any of that. Like all you need is a simple CRM. I would use close.io just because it's cheap and affordable, 70 to 90 bucks a month. You need a pre-call flow. So this is when someone actually books a call. They need to get an automated email. Ideally, they can't book for two days and they get one, two email with some kind of like marketing assets and social proof and case studies so that, you know, they kind of come onto this call a little bit warm. And then you just need post-call follow-ups. So after the call is done, sequence instead of close, you're able to just enroll this person in to nurture them to the point where they're like, yeah, okay, send me the contract, let's sign it, let's go. And then you just work your CRM. Now you gotta think about like, okay, I have the CRM, I have the website, I have the social proof, I have the business model, now I have to figure out how to get my 50 to 70 appointments a month, like what do I do? You could run ads and if you have the budget for it, you know, I'd probably recommend that. But in, in a lot of cases, like if you're bootstrapping something, let's not try to get fancy with an ad budget or anything of that sort. Let's just validate three channels. These are the three easiest channels, so they just take a little bit more work up front. But once you validate these three channels, pretty predictable and then once you really need to hit some like high scale velocity you can start looking into other channels but these are the cheapest ones to target er, to do and you get instant feedback the first one would be cold email i would try to aim to reach out to 3500 net new leads every single month which is going to get you roughly in that 35 to 7000 emails per month which is a solid place to be and the goal here is to make sure that you're setting it up in a way that all your positive replies get pushed into your crm and then you're scheduling follow-ups and like if i'm looking at it from a daily perspective like what i'm doing like i would spend half of my day spending all my time on just like appointment setting. So it's like I run all my cold email campaigns. I'm letting that run. I'm looking at all the positive replies I'm getting and I'm figuring out, okay, how do I actually get these guys to show up on a call, right? So if I get a positive reply, replying to the email as fast as I can, they still don't get back to me to my CRM. I'm going to go call them, give them a follow up on LinkedIn, connect with them on LinkedIn and just keep working that way. So I think that's a very important thing to do. And when you cold email, you have your lead list, you have your valid emails, your invalid and your catch -alls. Well, your invalids, you don't have an email for them. What you should do is just toss them into a LinkedIn outreach campaign. I would use HeyReach and get a, a network of avatars to actually execute the outreach up from rather than my actual LinkedIn profile. Just want to run into getting it banned. It does cost a little bit more, but it's worth the, the investment. And then you also can just put these avatars on your company profile. So it just actually looks a little bit more legitimate, which is, you know, a real thing. And then I would do the same thing. Like all the positive responses, I'm replying as fast as I can, pushing them into my CRM and then working on nurturing them to figure out how I can get them to set a call. And then you should have in your CRM kind of like a call sheet of all your positive responses. And you want to work those leads daily, every single day, figuring out what is that sequence of workflow that I'm going to do to kind of make sure that I can get these guys to show up on a call. And then when I have spare time, all these people that I engaged with that didn't actually reply to me, I'm going to put them into another sequence where I'm, I think you could integrate some dialer into close. I'm just going to work every day to dial through those and see if I can get someone to pick up. And that's it. That's the simple system. Like I'm not, obviously there's hundreds of videos on how to do all these funnels specifically, but, and then that's what I, I would watch and try to figure out and learn and adapt as I go. But this is all you need. It's not like it's super complicated. It's not that it's easy, but it's not that hard and it's very simple. And so if you could figure out what that product is that has a validated offer, a simple backend and has an LTV in that six to 10 K range, and then you could just have the base fundamentals from a CRM perspective to like a website and social proof perspective. And you just have that mindset of wanting to learn and figure out how you can consistently deliver. All you have to do is these three funnels to actually go to market and you'll be able to get 50 to 70 appointments on your calendar. I, I really don't think that's overshooting it by any means. If you're spending three to four hours a day on outreach, you could 100% do this. And I think where a lot of people mess up is they try to automate this entirely. Like they try to automate every single thing about this and then they just expect appointments to get on their calendar and that hardly ever works. You gotta put in some effort and work into here to really optimize and tweak it, specifically if it's your first time around. If it's your first time around, you're probably not gonna know how to do cold calls, you're probably not gonna know how to write copy, and so you gotta be really diligent about how to like actually run this, this process really well. I think the other thing that really messes people up is that on the cold email side, they are not really, or like cold email, it's kind of like an annoying process because you have to scrape your leads and then you have to validate them and then you take the valids, you put them into the sequencer, the invalids, you gotta push them into LinkedIn or into a waterfall enrichment to find more emails, the catch-alls you put into Scrubby, you wait 48 hours, take the balance, you put that into the sequencer, and then you have to do this every like 14 days. And, and that's that's where the pain point is. That's kind of why we built our Libra DFY plan. If you go to Libra.io slash DFY, you'll see how we've kind of like streamlined all this and actually made it cheaper for you guys to be able to, to do this versus doing this in-house. You know, if you want to go check that out, feel free to do so. But that's basically it. I hope you guys take some value from this video. I really wish I watched something like this when I first started because I think this is how you can just kind of have a really easy shortcut to hitting your first million dollars in annual recurring revenue.